you are on India Today podcasts and you are in the sledging room. Right, this is one of those World Cup specials we had promised on the sledging room. And of course, the uh, excitement is built up rapidly, really, with all the teams now having finally arrived in India for the 2023 Cricket World Cup. Um, some of the teams played their first warm-up matches on uh, Friday. One was washed out, right? The South Africa-Afghanistan game uh, because of incessant rain. Pakistan versus New Zealand. Obviously, by the time we record this podcast and it drops on the airwaves, um, there would have been a bit of movement in the practice matches. But first up, Akshay, we'll just round up the major developments ahead of the World Cup. Like I said, the teams have arrived in India. Pakistan arriving to a warm welcome. Um, our Ashwin has replaced our, uh, sorry, Aksar Patel in that 15-member squad for India. And we had predicted that. Remember, we'd said that in on the sledging room weeks before anyone yeah. even started talking about it, even before Ashwin was spotted training at the NCA. We were wondering, why not Ashwin? And three left arm spinners was just a tad bit too much. Kane Williamson will miss the first game of the World Cup yeah. against defending champions England. Um, that's a blow there. Manas Labushin has made a last-minute entry into the Australian side. And uh, Tommy Mikwal was left out of the Bangladesh team. And yeah. there was a bit of a ego battle between Shakib and Tamim. And, you know, Tamim Iqbal posting that video on Facebook. Shakib al Hassan reacting to that. Mashtabe Martaza not very pleased. There's plenty going on with Bangladesh cricket. Which is a little unfortunate because I thought they had the team to make an impact. You never know. Maybe they will um, in the due course of time. But for now. The most exciting bit of news, if you're an India fan, is the return of R. Ashwin to his third successor World Cup. Yeah. The two previous T20 World Cups yes. before. And uh, the irony is, like in those T20 format, in the T20 World Cups, Ashwin was nowhere in the fray, technically. Yeah. He had played his last ODI in January of 2022. And of course, he returned to the NCA to bowl some off-spin and then he played the first two yeah. one-day matches against Australia and they recently concluded three-match yeah. series, which India won 2-1. First thoughts? You must be very happy, right? Local lad. Of course, Raj. You know, um, you know if, you had, uh, if you look at it, hmm. it might be a very uh, unfortunate situation having Aksar Patel injured after having played so many matches. And when, when the team was picked itself in the sledging room, uh, ep previous episodes we had discussed that the spin bowling attack looked a little one-dimensional with three left-arm spinners. Of course, Kuldeep is a wrist spinner who can take the ball away from the left-hander as well. But it looked a bit one-dimensional because Aksar and Jadeja, similar bowlers, uh, Jadeja with a little more ability to, you know, spin it, drift it and all that. Aksar is a very good test bowler. He does that in tests. But in white ball cricket, he hasn't proved himself much of a, much of to be much of a wicket taker. Yeah. So that bit is sorted now. Uh, it, it's an unfortunate situation, but it might be a blessing in disguise for the team management, you know. They had the room to bring Ashwin, an off-spinner, especially with the teams packing their batting lineup with left-handers these days. Mm. So, and the experience that Ashwin brings, it, it skills were never a doubt with Ashwin. And just, I think the match fitness was something that they had to look in. Mm. They could have roped in Ashwin had he been fit for the Asia Cup final, but they didn't want to take, take that race as a match fit for the Asia Cup final. So, they got Sundar who was training at the NCA at that time. Mm. And Ashwin might have been asked to go to the NCA and train. Mm. And Ashwin is back. And the irony is, he didn't play a crucial test match series in England. Yeah. <laughs> Five <laughs> tests in England. And the World Test Championship yeah. final. Number yeah. one test bowler in the world. Yeah. Not playing the World Test Championship final. Huh. But in white ball formats, he has been part of three major tournaments back to back. As in, And I, I think there is a big Rohit Sharma influence in this. Mm. And he was also the change of guard with the team management. In the 2020 T20 World Cup, if you look at it, mm. that before the World Cup itself, Virat Kohli had said that he would quit as captain and Rohit Sharma was looked at as the next uh, in line. And I think Rohit had an influence in his selection there also because if you look at it, before the 2021 T20 World Cup, Ashwin hadn't played a T20 match for like 3-4 years, I think. And then there was an IPL before the second half of the IPL yeah. that was postponed was just before the T20 World Cup. Yeah. And Ashwin performed well in that and he, he was back. At least in 2022, he played a few series before he was selected for the T20 World Cup. Mm. But in 2023 again, 
Ashwin also always finds a way, right? You know what amazes me most about this whole R Ashwin situation is arguably the world's best off spinner. Yeah. I know he's had comparisons with Nathan Lyon and mm. again Nathan Lyon is also yeah. a great off spinner. He's uh, obviously bowled a lot of his yeah. overs in Australia, not always conducive to spin. But you see when you find world class spinners like Ashwin and Lyon, they always figure out a way to take yeah. wickets to trouble batsmen. Lyon obviously not part of Australia's limited overs plans. But yes, you rightly correctly mentioned right ashwin was in part of the four the, the test series mm. in england um you mentioned the rohit sharma influence i'm sure rohit sharma would have had a significant influence in yeah. selecting the playing 11 for the world test championship final where ashwin didn't find him yeah find a berth but yeah. obviously the batsmen batted so poorly yeah across those four days you not this is not to say ashwin would have made any serious dent or damage moreover um given ashwin's quality and mm-hmm. class you'd expect him to play two of these three formats rather yes. regularly t20s yes. i can understand you know you'd also not want to expose your star bowler to three formats yeah he he's 37 by the he's way he's 37 he's in played t20 cricket for a while mm-hmm. i mean even though he was part, part of the last, the last two t20 world cups but um i have been a little surprised with india's approach towards ashwin in mm. in in one day cricket because You're looking at number eight, hmm. where I thought Ashwin could have done a decent job at number eight. Hmm. Now, why would you be so obsessive over the number eight batting capabilities? Yeah. Don't you trust your top five, top six? But I, that's not the case only with India, Raj. No, I, yeah. I get it. I but get it. Even with Australia, right? Yeah. They're batting right down till Pat comes. But then, but I think it's a natural phenomenon. With, yeah, but that's, exactly. That's, that they've been blessed with those kind of bowlers yeah. who are very good batsmen lower down yeah. the order. Same with England. I mean, yeah. a Chris Wokes might come in at eight or nine. Mm. Uh, Moin Ali can shunt up the order to number three, and he can suddenly yeah. find him at number eight someday. They have Sam Curran with Ben Stokes in that middle order that gives them a lot more. Yeah. Variation. Obviously, Ben Stokes isn't going to bowl in the World Cup. That's why he's back in the mm. ODI format. He's been in very good batting form. But I understand that. But um, you look at Sri Lanka, for instance. You know, with Dunit Vilalagay, he yeah. can bat. He can do such a great job at number eight. But this is the other thing that has amazed me. How many of these ODI matches really finish yeah. in that sort of dimension? Mm. How many ODI matches can you say? You know, what a team has won by 15 runs, 20 runs. That number eight has had an impact. right good one day teams would have five super batsmen five super bowlers and hopefully one good all rounder and a wicket keeper and another good all rounder india blessed with that hardik pandya i think where india also struggling is with ravindra jadeja yeah. because you really don't know what to do with him in one day cricket look when you talk of test cricket jadeja is right up there right up there but think back over the last several years how many match winning innings with ravindra jadeja have played with the bat hmm. what sort of impact has jadeja had with the bat at number 7 which is not to s- doubt jadeja's capabilities as a batsman maybe uh, he would be a far more influential player yeah. with the bat at number 4 right probably uh, i think he also harbored ambitions of batting higher up the order like hardik pandya does hmm. and which is fair enough you know these are great all rounders and they want to go out there and express themselves and give themselves enough time to realize their potential I think that's the conundrum around the number eight spot. Also, because before this uh, frenetic build up to the World Cup, you weren't even sure about your batting lineup. Exactly. Rohit wasn't in great form. Virat was struggling. You were waiting on KL Rahul and Shreya Sayer. So I think that also played a part, right? With Shreya and KL having yes. shown that they are fit in form. Ishan Kishan in brilliant form. Shubman Gill is in the middle of one of the greatest. one day yes. calendar years that way rohit sharma is getting runs virat kohli is getting runs so i think that has also given the team management some sense of assurance yeah. of course aksar patel's injury was unfortunate yes aksar patel would have been phenomenal at number 8 but we discussed this not just in the pre- few uh, episodes that have gone by we've discussed this in the build up to the world cup yes. right from the time we started our yes. sledging room till now you know this yeah. was our motivating factor right to build the team for the world cup yeah. to build a crescendo for the world cup we have discussed this exact thing yes you're obsessing so much over the lower order is because you don't have that kind of faith yeah. i think now they have that yeah now they have that and mostly like i said shubman gill's form and then now you're spoiled for choice now you're spoiled for um obviously either only two of these three shreya sayer kl rahul yes. and ishan kishan will play and where will you play surya now where will you play surya kumar but uh, in all fairness i mean yes he got those two blistering half centuries against australia it won't be fair to 
put the blame squarely on Sky for the defeat in the third ODI. Yeah. But yes, I think uh, Surya Kumar Yadav is still not ODI ready. He's a phenomenal T20 cricketer. Mm. No, I mean, hundred percent, no doubts about that. Yeah. But one day cricket, I think you are blessed to have that kind of line. I mean, look, wh what is going to be a lineup? You have Rohit Gill, Gil. Kohli, mm. top three sealed. Most likely Shreyas at number four. You'll have uh, Rahul at number five. And you don't have room for Ishan, Ishan, Ishan obviously, because Hardik Ishan Pandya. slash Shreyas, exactly. might be. I, or maybe Ishan slash Rahul, I don't know. I mean, yeah, Rahul, Rahul was just captaining India for the captain for yeah. your Australia audience. But I, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about his wicket keeping yeah. abilities as well. And obviously, you need Hardik Pandya. And yes, I get why the team management is insistent with Ravindra Jadeja. He's a world class all rounder. Yeah. But I think the problem has been his ODI form. Yeah. And Hardik Pandya, one of the greatest impact players in world cricket currently, yes. in shorter formats cricket. He has, he's not quite keen on playing test cricket yet. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I hope he does. He'll be such an uh, asset to India in overseas yeah. conditions. But uh, yes, I think that's where they have their lineup sorted. And Ashwin is no mug with the bat. We all know that. He's a superb <laughs> cricketer yeah. in tests, exactly. superb batsman in test cricket. But I think that's where they've sorted. Now look at this lineup. You know, Rohit, Shubman, Gil, Virat Kohli. Shreya Sayer, Kail Rahul, Hardik Pandya at number 6, Ravindra Chadij at number 7, R. Ashwin at number 8, Kuldeep Yadav at number 9, and then you have Siraj and and, and Boomra. For, for conditions like Chennai, Lucknow, yes. Delhi, beautiful conditions, you know. And then we have obviously have a third seamer in Hardik Pandya. On days where you want to play three paces, yeah. you have Shami. Definitely. So I think that bowling lineup is now looking extremely dangerous, and I think yeah. it's in form. And it's superbly balanced. You look at Australia's bowling lineup, they're struggling. Uh, Pat Cummins, Josh Hazelwood, yes, they came, all of them came good, thanks largely to Glenn Maxwell in that last uh, ODI in Indore. Yeah. Was it Indore? Uh, Rajkot. Rajkot, I'm sorry. So that was in Rajkot. And uh, now you have uh, India's bowling lineup. Pakistan are without one of the key yes. strike bowlers. I Harris Rauf is just coming off an injury. Yeah. Shaheen Afridi wasn't in great form for most of the Asia Cup. Sri Lanka have, are without two Tushmata of their Chamira super... And you know, two of the, yes, two of the leading wicket takers. So now India... South Africa more without more. Noya. And Malaga. Yeah. So I think that has yeah. sorted itself out. But since we're talking about KL Rahul, I mean, I know you love panning KL Rahul. He's a brilliant cricketer. His wicket keeping has been yeah. far from impressive. And there you have Ishan Kishan waiting in the wings, who's not only a much better wicket keeper, but he's been in form. Yeah. At the at the Asia Cup, I think KL Rahul did a decent job in the Super Force and in the final. Uh, With the DRS course, especially. Yeah. And his keeping was also okay. But I think the heat and the humidity on, that was come there. Come on, come on. Yeah, You're talking about elite athletes, Akshay. Yeah. You're talking about professional cricketers. But he's cricketers. coming back from come a on. long layoff, right? You have to understand that. This and is the World Cup. Yeah. Now, no, no, look, 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 look. Now you, please don't get into that dearth of excuses. Come on. Okay. This is so, the World Cup you're talking about. Yeah. You're playing in India. Mm -hmm. But you, so you will you sacrifice KL Rahul's spot for the? For, uh, can you afford to pick both Ishan and uh, KL? No. And drop Shreyas? No. So, so I mean, if you have no, to if take you're the spoiled both, for, if okay, you're spoiled for something. choice. Okay, tell me something, Raj. Now that you're very concerned with KL Rahul's wicket keeping, what will be your? I have your always been concerned about KL Rahul's wicket keeping. Okay, what will be your middle order then? Ishan, I, I would Ishan have and Shreyas. Shreyas and KL at drop? number four. Hmm. I would have Ishan at number five. I would have Hardik at number six. So no KL, no KL in your lineup. It would be. It is a hard decision. I mean, yeah. if I were the coach or yeah. the captain looking at that, it would be a very difficult call to make. Hmm. I mean, I know what's going to happen eventually. You will have killed Rahul in that lineup because of his experience. Um, but yeah, I. But would, you wouldn't want Ashwin and Jadeja staring down at KL after a missed stumping. Yeah, that exactly. Also, I mean, right? I mean, yeah. see, world class spinners like Ashwin and Jadeja. Hmm. No matter. I mean, it could be Glenn Maxwell. Glenn yeah. Maxwell is not a world class spinner. He wouldn't want a uh, want a catch being dropped or a stumping yeah. chance being missed by Alex Carey, right? Yeah. Uh, same with Ashwin and Jadeja. Yeah. I mean, these guys, look, the, the, it's not it's not just about going to yeah. the field, just going to the pitch and turning your arm, rolling mm. your arm over and getting a wicket. It's years of hard work yeah. that would have taken you to that moment where you're on the verge of taking yeah. a wicket in international cricket. Every wicket counts for something. I still so, remember how Rishabh Pant was a little nervous when he started yeah. out in tests, right? Yeah. In home conditions, he was trusted by the team management and the selectors at mm. that point of time. Mm. But Ashwin staring down at Rishabh Pant, how it, Ashwin, Ashwin Bai and all that. I think it 
also not just the bowler right yeah of course uh, it also sort of affects the morale of the team e- exactly see- and it might be costly very costly in a world cup match i have spoken to wicket keepers who played international cricket and they would always say that look wicket keeping is a thankless job we all keep talking about that right why is it a thankless job because when you're doing your job yeah. well nobody's talking about it except if your name is not dhoni unless you're ms dhoni yeah. where everyone is anyway yeah. talking about it, even if you're not playing international yeah. cricket but yeah Mm. but the moment you start fumbling the moment you start making a mess of yeah. opportunities behind the stumps you are in immediate focus it happened and to rishabh pant it happened to yeah. rishabh pant so often yeah. right and we would talk about how yeah he is an enigmatic dhoni exactly. character dhoni like character but you know you sort of uh, missing out on dhoni's wicket keeping skills yes. but you look back at the early part of ms dhoni's yeah. career he wasn't a great wicket keeper I mean Dhoni wasn't Dhoni's wicket keeping evolved over yes. time right yeah. it evolved over time so it wasn't Ishan Kishan hmm. um it wasn't like Ishan Kishan was such a superb wicket keeper right from the start yeah. he also evolved exactly KL Rahul is not a specialist wicket keeper so you have to understand all those factors but and this is the world cup but now you have to take a call right now you have to take a call but yeah. also look at look at it this other way right hmm. India won the Asia cup India was supremely dominant in the Asia cup but there are two matches that stand out in the build up to the world cup there are two things that you got to look at the chase versus bangladesh hmm. understand the india team there was no kohli there was no ishan hmm. right um shubman gill scored 100 yeah india lost a middling total you were chasing a middling target yeah. and that last odi against bangladesh there was no shubman gill washington sundar opened the innings yeah. uh, australia yeah uh, against australia yeah. washington sundar opened the innings hmm. rohit sharma was aggressive blazing yes 81 um yeah. but then again you fluffed up that chance of 350 yeah. chasing is is chasing becoming a bit of a problem kil rahul showed no intent in that chase yeah. you know there was nothing to lose you were just going out there to express yourselves what was that pressure and for the first time i thought kil rahul looked a little shaky after his comeback even in yeah. that defeat to bangladesh he yeah. hit, he he scored some crucial runs exactly but against australia the pressure of the scoreboard huh. like they say always huh. it looked evident on him and surya kumar yadav as in he he got out unfortunately but virat kohli raj what do you say of the chase master he didn't get going in that chase at all if you're talking about kl rahul you have to talk about virat kohli absolutely ap- approach also absolutely and you know ironically these two players were at the center stage when yeah. india set up that massive total against pakistan yes. but and this is also something we spoken of several times on yeah. several sledging room episodes it is one thing setting a target it's also another thing chasing a chasing target chasing it yeah. india have been good chasers but can you take that pressure of a world cup chase look what happened in the 2017 champions trophy final look at what happened in the 2019 yeah. world cup semi final 240 odd runs the 2015 world cup semi final as well um and you were chasing middling totals yeah. on all occasions and here you are um you you know you're renowned as a good chasing team you have you have the chase master batting at number 3 but i'm sorry they both kohli and rahul looked very scratchy kohli yeah. got a half century even rohit sharma by the way you have to give him credit for taking the initiative yeah. he did play there were some streaky boundaries there were some streaky edges he got some runs obviously he got them pretty rapidly but uh, yes i mean if i have to nitpick i mean most yes, of your boxes exactly. have been ticked both exactly. most of your box but if i have to quibble and you know yeah. have to look at certain factors i think for me that chasing mentality for the indian team yes is very very crucial also your bowlers pulled your pull you back you know i thought australia were closing in on 400 Definitely. they would have closed Definitely. in on 400 had it not been for bumrah and those quick wickets from kuldeep yadav i thought bumrah was brilliant on that pitch yeah. washington sundar 10 overs 48 runs on a f- belter But uh, a half yes, it's decent spinner against this lineup. We saw how Dunit Velalaga operated. A wrist operated. spinner yeah. and a left arm spinner. And yeah. Glenn Maxwell giving away four wickets. And uh, Shreyas Iyer was defending a ball when Maxwell uh-huh. got that wicket. Uh-huh. Like Kohli was not able to. As in Kohli, at least went for an attacking shot, which he rarely uh-huh. does in the middle of middle stage of an innings. Yeah. But Shreyas Iyer was dismissed while he was trying to play a defensive shot. So that tells you. is not a spin proof batting lineup yeah it is not and we spoken about that enough yeah. you know especially left arm spin left arm pace wrist spin yeah. um that is a been a bit of concern i mean even glen maxwell with his part time off spin he really stifled that batting line coming lineup. back from an injury like coming back, coming from, back from a 5 month 6 month layoff a 4 for 40 of 10 overs yeah. i mean that wasn't that kind of pitch yeah. you can't say the pitch changed nature yeah. its nature drastically obviously it's a little more challenging batting under lights i get that but the rajkot yeah. pitch was a very very good surface um but what also good, stood out for me yeah, yeah but give it what also stood out for me akshay was like we said already that that approach from kohli and rohit in that chase mm. 
look, it, there was no pressure. Yeah. It was almost like a warm-up match with an international tag because yeah. you had won the series. Yeah. You had ticked every box. By then, you also knew that Ashwin was going to be your replacement. So there were no fitness concerns. There was no concern over form. And yet you bat like that. For me, it was a little, I don't know. And even with, with that stage that you were at, I think with about less than 20 overs, you needed uh, needed to go at eight uh, or a yes. shade over eight and over. Yeah. Uh, you should have had a better crack at that. I mean, you eventually lost by 66 runs. Yeah. You could have lost by 90 runs. I wouldn't. I mean, you know, that would have been okay as long as the intent was there. For me, what was missing was that intent in the chase. And why that also worries me is because you go back to the 2019 World Cup, yeah. you lost to England because there was no intent in your chase. You yes. could not chase down MS and that Kedar. total against New Zealand in the semi-final. All of your remarkable victories came after setting totals. Look at Australia, mm. you set a total. Look at the Pakistan game, you set a total. Um, so you have to, now you have to look at all sorts of corners. Definitely. But again, I'm only nitpicking because nine out of 10 boxes, eight out of 10 boxes have been ticked. Yeah. You're now only looking at Ashwin ahead of, Shami, Shami ahead of, yeah. whoever. Uh, you're looking at your number six. Will Surya play? Where does Hardik bat? So those are happy headaches to have. But, Definitely. You know, these are also some factors that you need to weigh in. Look sorted, India? I think so, by by and large. Hmm. Because if you, were look to, if you were to look at some of the other teams, Australia, for instance, you know, yeah. you, you're the most successful team in World Cups. They're carrying ODM an World injured Cup. player. They're carrying an injured player who is not going to be available. Travis Head for yeah. the first half. Manas Labushin wasn't in the reckoning. He was yeah. not named in the preliminary squad. Suddenly, he, I mean, obviously in the back of some spectacular form performances, they had to let go of Ashton Agar. They have um, one, one lead spinner now. Josh Hazel. Zampa. Exactly. So, Josh Hazelwood, Pat Cummins. Yeah. I mean, can they leak a lot of runs on these flat pitches? Again, Australia have too many pace, uh, yes. pace bowling all rounders. You have Cameron Reeve, you have Mark, Marcus Stoinis, you have Mitchell Marsh. Obviously, Marsh is going to play. Banking big on Glenn Maxwell, I think. You banking heavily on Glenn Maxwell, and Glenn Maxwell's world, you know, uh, batting. I mean, obviously, he's explosive. He's played some superb knocks in one day internationals, but again. Can to find that sense of rhythm yeah. and consistency, can he do it on the big stage when yeah. there is going to be so much pressure can on him? Can he do it with the ball? He might be required to bowl at least five, be. six overs per be. over. Yeah. yeah. But they also have some happy headaches there. Yeah. But Cameron Green offers you more probably with, with the bat and Mark, uh, sorry, with the ball. And, um, you know, Marcus Stoin is, is a far seasoned, far more seasoned uh, batsman. So yeah. uh, those are some issues they look at. But they'll be happy for David Warner's form. Definitely. Uh, three half centuries. Steve, Steve Smith also finding some form. The way he batted in Rajkot. Mitchell Marsh showing some class. Yeah, exactly. So I think let's not quibble too much. Now yeah. it's time to also back the team because they have ticked most of the yeah. boxes. I am very happy with R. Ashwin's inclusion because I'm a huge R. Ashwin fan. There, Raj. There, I wanted yeah. to make a point. Just one quick point before we, you know, move on to something else. But you know what? You spoke about Ravindra Jadeja not getting that opportunity to bat at the top of the order. R. Ashwin's move is very good. Mm -hmm. They have found that missing piece in the puzzle. But they could have planned better, right? For instance, someone like Washington Sundar, when he played those good knocks, they should have tried him. They should have given him more opportunities. Yeah, getting Ashwin is okay now. But you have to rely on someone who hasn't played so much and you had options, other options. I think th that was a missed, missed opportunity there. Like someone like Washington Sundar. Yeah. But, you know, I have also thought about it. And remember, we spoke about yes. why Washington Sundar should have been blooded into all yeah. formats after that Brisbane knock. But then also came a period where Washington was often injured, injured yeah. and he would miss out matches and he wasn't available to play domestic cricket. He wasn't at the NCA because, I mean, he was at the NCA to recuperate from certain injuries. Multiple injuries, yeah. yeah yes, but I also feel, Akshay, that I think they don't look at Washington as a wicket taker. Yes. I think that's where Jadeja pips the other spin yeah. bowling all-rounders. You know, Aksar you look at... Washington. Ash, Aksar Patel and Washington Sundar. I think that's where Jadeja pips them. Yeah. That even though Jadeja hasn't had a great time with the bat in one-day cricket, yeah. you know that at any time, you could he could suddenly give you a burst of three wickets and he could just crack the game wide open. He did yes. that in the Asia Cup as well, right? He picked four wickets. What's that Definitely. against Nepal, if, yeah. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken? He took some crucial wickets because the others look very lethargic yeah. and very scratchy. I think that's where Jadeja can come into play. And imagine a pitch like Chennai. Yeah. If you get a slow pitch, you have Jadeja, yeah. Ashwin and Kuldeep. Australia, anyway, looking at Nightmare. these three and they'll be like, oh goodness. Yeah. It's like for Asian teams of the 80s yeah. and early 90s facing Queen, up to Courtney yeah, Ambrose yeah. And Courtney Walsh and maybe Franklin Rose in the mid-90s on a Barbados pitch. So, 
uh, but we don't know which uh, which chennai pitch will be offered yes. because we also seen some pretty flat surfaces at the chipok during the ipl so but it's a it's a good combination to have i think definitely but what do you make of uh, pakistan and i was uh, very how, what do you make of the welcome as and i was very happy when yeah. seeing the welcome that they got because you know i think the players themselves were not were not sure of what to expect when they came and they were they looked like genuinely surprised when their no i i tell you why i'm not trying to take a jibe at pakistan they yeah. are now our guests but yeah. i'll tell you this this is the difference in maturity i have often said that on the sledging room as well that you know you look at their media coverage mm. you look at our media coverage yeah. you look at their fans and you look at our fans mm. yes obviously we want our team to win yeah. there will be disappointment when um players are not doing well there are a few rotten apples exactly person you know troll players yeah. and make very personal remarks right they make it very personal that's just not on we've said that new numerable times on the sledging room that's just not on but i think that's the maturity where they were given a warm yeah. welcome they have obviously been you know uh, treated very well and uh, you know it's surprising that they were surprised because that yeah. is what indian hospitality has been mm. all about yeah. for thousands and thousands of years definitely right so yes but i was so disappointed by zakash of statement yes. the pcb president who used some very used outrageous comments and yeah. now he's clarified his <laughs> statements but it was a little disappointing you know when especially when yeah. the bcci also went and they were so gracious exactly. the bcci officials were so gracious and again that was a lot of maturity shown by the indian board yeah. when they went there they came back they made some nice statements about yeah. um about uh, you know everything that transpired in pakistan exactly. the warm welcome that they also received exactly um across the border so to hear zakash of statement in yeah. that light is just disappointing and a little disheartening yeah just imagine yeah. the players raj as in yeah. there were there was good camaraderie during the asia cup also yeah. we saw shaheen afridi the players get along them, yeah. the players get along yeah. i mean um so it was disappointing and obviously he, there was, you know the pcb has now issued a statement mm. which is very bland there is no apology yeah um that is very responsible of the pcb president the yeah. pakistan cricket board president zakar ashraf uh, i thought that was really responsible exactly. and you know you when the videos were going viral on social media you would read some of those comments from some of the pakistani journalists exactly. and fans they, even they were yeah. frustrated Irritated. with the kind of comments that yeah. came from zakar ashraf's mouth it's just um uh, absolutely ungainly yeah. to use that kind of language focus yeah. on the cricket exactly right you have come to india you've been given a warm reception you know they will be well looked after yeah and uh, yeah obviously when you in india you'd want india to win especially against pakistan yes you'd want that you know you'd want to maintain a clean slate and this yeah. is what we would want you know we are fans before anything exactly. else and we'd want that and why But, put extra pressure on the players now as in you yeah. that unnecessary statement taking away what has happened since their arrival they trained 10 hours yeah. after coming <clears throat> and they also are unsure of the conditions right yeah. they have not played here for like seven none of these players have played here before yeah. uh, so why put extra pressure why not that was an irresponsible statement yeah. at this time i mean even with pakistan by the yeah. way the, the team is not entirely set right i exactly. mean there were rumors unverified reports i'm yeah. reiterating that of a bit of a fight between yeah. an argument so to say between babar azam and shaheen afridi after the yeah. asia cup uh, disaster after that defeat to sri lanka so we don't know for sure but obviously babar was also invited yeah. to shaheen's yeah. wedding functions and what not and the both of them sat talking yeah. to each other they sat at the same table enjoying a meal we don't know what transpired nasim shah is not fit shadab is not in form nasim so, shah is so not here shadab is right? woefully out of form yeah. harris rof is recovering from an injury he didn't play any couple yeah. of cricket after being Hassan Ali coming from, back after yeah, a long time. Yeah, Hassan Ali's inclusion was a yeah. spectacle in itself. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, you'd rather avoid these comments because yeah. you want to focus on how the team has prepared, and yes. and Pakistan shouldn't be too carried away with the fact that they had achieved world number one because we've already discussed yes how they reached there by yeah. beating under strength teams, and um, Pakistan have a whole host of problems to first so, sort out, yeah. right? And, and talking about problems, Raj. the other side bangladesh what do you make of that as in like you said they 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 had the team yes they have the team but how can you as in we have seen teams with troubles in the past in the world cups not doing well teams with you know issues in the dressing room not doing well and why did bangladesh have to do this ahead of a important campaign as in 
imagine bangladesh had a brilliant home record in the lead up to this world cup england lost india lost yeah. so that momentum should have been carried instead of this unnecessary back and forth between their star players right talking of bangladesh's momentum yeah they defeated indian they have defeated india in three out of the last four, four ODIs, matches yeah right don't forget the asia cup as yeah. well yes it was an insignificant match india yeah. didn't really care much about the result because they knew everything was sorted with the line their bench strength at that time yeah um you have a couple of young upcoming players coming up the ranks for bangladesh the tamim ikbal controversy right through the year has yeah. been just bizarre right first that retirement then he takes a u turn then yeah. he goes and says i'll play here i'll play this i'll take a break i won't play in the asia cup and finally he finds himself out of the world cup side we don't know what transpired there and then that video that facebook live yes. right what what was that a facebook, facebook video live. yes i thought that was uncalled for you know you're a senior pakistan cricketer you yeah. uh, cricketers in the subcontinent are al- almost considered like statesmen yes you, I, and tamim ikbal is not a young 24 year old he's a seasoned yeah. hardened cricketer he's being looked up to by a lot of people in bangladesh he's a hero yeah. for a lot of bangladesh uh, cricket fans he's a, yeah. he's a hero i mean even for cricketers in the yes. lineup they would look up to look up to a star like tamim ikbal for him to come and issue that statement for everything that was unfolding before that the bcb bosses were clearly not happy with the way tamim ikbal yeah. went about um uh, making those statements in the press and then you had did you need shakib al hasan to make that statement exactly. in india as well i mean you are first e you're touring yeah you are be in the middle of a world cup yeah you know nothing no less yeah. in the middle of a world cup and you're talking of tamim ikbal i mean he could have just i don't know he could have been statesman like exactly one of one of the two should have been yeah idly both of them and yeah. you're talking of two of bangladesh's greatest ever exactly. cricketers exactly right you're talking of two of bangladesh's cricket greatest Shaki. ever cricketers this is not the 1990s where you're still a young team yeah you know trying to make the mark in international yeah. cricket this is 2023 your under 19 team has won the world cup that, you were that in the quarter finals of yeah. the 2015 odi world yeah. cup you i i you know i was telling someone before the show that you know bangladesh have wherever they've done well they've done well with the siege mentality because they yeah. know that they're always underdogs even at home yeah. against teams like india and england um sometimes most of these teams wouldn't even send their star players yeah they have been baffled by that and um, i think that victory over india they in fact uh, they have defeated india in two odi series you yes. remember the last one was MS 2014 Doni, mustafa is Uh, or 2015 and 2015, then yeah. then in 2023 mustafa is when that was 2015 when mustafa was making his debut and now you know uh, uh, i was just thinking about the young players so many young players they have picked yeah. tanzim sakib who has done really well in the asia cup yeah so many young players and what will they think looking at you know two of your biggest stars i not hope doing for bangladesh right sake they they don't they don't get too swayed away because you need you know cricket look at international cricket it's not a yeah. very large global Group, yeah sport yet i mean it is getting there yeah. you know you have cricket in the asian games yeah. you know there are so many associate members but for the world cup for instance yes. you have you know when you're talking of favorites every year is going to be india, india australia yeah. england south yeah. africa sometimes pakistan sometimes you know sri lanka can uh, yeah. so new zealand, zealand can be dark horses here and there and they always do well in domestic uh, in, in, in icc events so you want more and more teams to be more consistent because yeah. that's what saddens me about the west indies you yeah. want to see them do well and that is a remarkable thing about indian cricket you know yeah. yes they've also had their share of controversies especially that virat kohli phase yeah. a few years back but the, i think they've well passed that yeah. you see the way virat kohli has also address that issue yes. and you know welcome the youngsters i think the bcc has played a large part yeah. in that as well in getting the players on board and getting getting a strong environment and no matter what you say you know I, we have been very critical of certain yeah. uh, cricketing tactics but at least now you see you know what eight out of 10 boxes have been ticked yes they will make mistakes there will be uh, hurdles down the line but i think bangladesh now need to be a lot more mature definitely they need to be a lot more much your shakib al hasan you know you look at rohit sharma you look at virat kohli you look at even yeah. someone like jasprit bumrah who is a young senior cricketer now right look at the state someone like hardik pandya exactly so look at that maturity yeah. and shakib has had a history of making such statements he's had a history of yeah. some yeah. bust ups with very umpires. very ugly antics as well yeah. especially in domestic cricket in bangladesh you know kicking the stumps away and seeing outrageous things that's got to stop i mean yeah. shakib al hasan will probably retire in a, in, a, in a couple of years we don't know we hope he's an, i mean he is going to retire at yeah. the end of this world cup isn't he something uh, that he said something that he said i'm not sure champions yeah, trophy something 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 yeah. on those lines where this is probably anyway his last world cup hmm. um you look at the 2019 world cup he was in such phenomenal form yes. with the bat one of the greatest all rounders in the odi format 
international players have played five world cups yeah, and exactly. Mushfiq exactly. are going to do that and you know i mean look at his form in the 2019 yeah. world cup he is arguably one of the greatest one day cricketers to have ever played the game yeah. um, you you don't want that sort of yeah ignominy you know you want you want to be a little more mature and a little more balanced about about things does this mean that you're not giving a lot of chances to asian teams like in 2000 Eleven mm. in the subcontinent. Three of the four semi-finalists were Asian teams. Uh, Do you exactly. see that trend repeating? I just want I, to ask I you don't that. Know. I, you know, I, I have, I've, I've thought about this so often, and you know, we've talked about it as well. Eighty-three mm. India champions, eighty-seven India in the semis, ninety-two obviously Pakistan won the World, World Cup, ninety-six Sri Lanka, ninety-nine Pakistan in the finals, two thousand three India in the finals, two thousand seven Sri Lanka in the finals, two thousand eleven India, India won, Sri Lanka in the final, twenty fifteen um, again you yeah, had India, India in, in the, the semis. semis. 2019 you had india, india in the semis. semis 2023 now you look at this the 11th world cup now yeah, yeah. from 83 onward obviously 75 79 were dominated by the west indies now you have serious doubts because india are clearly miles ahead of the yeah. other asian teams yeah, definitely you know there was a time when you would say pakistan are mercurial yeah they don't have that fear factor anymore yeah Uh, there was Wasim Akram, there was Wakar Yunus, there was Shoaib Akhtar, there was Said Anwar and Amir Sohail and Ijaz Ahmed and Afridi here, Moin Ali there, Rashid Latif uh, as well, Inzamam Ul Haq, Saklin Mushtaq, Mushtaq, that, Abdul Razak, I mean, yes. I can't remember, I could just keep rattling names yeah. and, you know, across generations. And now, you look at, look at Pakistan now, they probably struggle to get a proper in-form playing 11. Shadab Khan is in horrible form. Suddenly, Hassan Ali comes out of nowhere. Yeah. And is a forced change, obviously because of Nasim's injury. The, imagine the pressure on Shahin Shafridi. Imagine the pressure on the mid, lower middle yes. middle order. Yeah. yeah. I mean, tam, uh, you have uh, Babar at number three. You have Fakhar Riz- Zaman, and yeah. you have uh, uh, either Abdullah Shafiq or Fakhar Zaman, and then yeah. you have uh, Imam Ul Haq. Um, any of the top three fails, and what happens then? And Babar hasn't been in great touch yeah. also. Yeah. So Rizwan is still a question mark Rizwan in this format. Rizwan is forever a question mark in any format for yeah. me. I mean, even in T20 cricket, Rizwan and Babar won the greatest opening combination. Yeah. They went, they reached the T20 World Cup final only yeah. because they could get through the semis. Only because South Africa suffered that shock defeat to Netherlands. So and Iftikhar also has the burden to you know carry that lower middle order. There's a lot of pressure on yeah. the, like I said, on the middle order, the lower middle order. So yes, I mean, Sri if you Lanka. look at it that way. Mm. Even in Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka have some very good bowling options, yeah. even with Chamira and Hasaranga out. Yeah. But uh, Dasun Shanaka himself is not in great form with the bat. Definitely. And you too reliant on Kusal Pereira, Kusal yeah. Mendes. But they've backed their youngsters, Raj. That's one thing. You know, Angelo they Matthews. Yeah. So much was being said about Angelo Matthews coming yeah. back after yeah. a good LPL, Lanka Premier League. But they have stuck with a core group for some time now, for yeah. the last one year or so. Yeah. Unfortunate that Vanindu and Dushmanta are not available. Yeah. But at the same time, they've got Lahiru Kumara and the left-arm pacer back in the squad after injury concerns. The, in fact, I mean, I've been so impressed with the way they've backed Dhoni yeah. Peralege. You know, definitely look at his domestic career yeah. and from where he's evolved. Yeah. You know, it's been a very early, it's been a very quick transition. Maybe it's a little bit of it's been forced because they yes. missed so many of the star bowlers in the Asia Cup. But good for them, good for Dhoni. Yeah. to have reached that status and i know, think that asia cup defeat shouldn't be looked at as you know it should be looked at as one off they should look at it no i think they should yeah. look at it very seriously 50 all out and yeah. the approach from the batsman obviously siraj was yeah. breathing fire that afternoon and obviously the conditions worked against the sri lankan batsman but siraj was absolutely on fire yeah. but i think i think they should look at it very but seriously the last time the Rajin asian team was bowled out for 30 50 <laughs> went out to win the series <laughs> after that <laughs> Let's hope But, Sri Lanka yeah. can put up a good fight. Yeah, yeah, they can. They can come back, and yeah. they are, and they have reliable top order, middle order batters. Yeah. So I would, I would actually back Sri Lanka over Pakistan because Definitely. of the balance that they have. Even Bangladesh, you know, if they yeah. can get their bearings right, exactly, if they can stop those tantrums, it's almost childlike, you know, some of the yeah. things that they say. <laughs> exactly, you know, it's not. I'm sorry, but you know, 34, 35, 36. Years. You can understand that fans are emotional, yeah. but as players, you can't I mean, attach age, so much right? emotion. I mean, yeah. at, at 34, 35, 36, you're supposed to be a little more yeah. mature, and especially when you're playing cricket yeah. at that level. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, but look, it's it's Bangladesh, and they can yeah. be unpredictable as well, and you don't want to take any chances. And hopefully, definitely, for us to see that India might come out on top and. you know stake a claim to the third world cup who knows right but it's 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 uh, 
it's pretty open ended still Definitely. because you will have australia they they'll be a different unit altogether once yeah. the world cup starts Definitely. england so, has your top 4 changed from last week i still have the top 3 Every week I get confused. I think for me right now it's mm. is India, Australia, and England. Mm. Somebody said South Africa, and I quite agree. Yeah. New Zealand, you won't ever rule them out in a yeah. World Cup tournament. But I, I frankly, as of now, I don't see pa- Pakistan, Sri Lanka making mm. a dent and going up to the top four. Yeah. Um, I don't. I mean, a lot of people would have said Pakistan, but I, I, I don't know. Given the scene, uh, given the form of this team, yeah. I will predict an India, England final in the World okay. Cup. I did predict a Chennai. Gujarat final yes, in the IPL yes. and I said Chennai would win. Yeah. I'm predicting so your record is good there. Hopefully we'll see. We'll see. What about you? Let's just predict the No, that, that's the only thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing. India. Uh, yeah. Pakistan slash New Zealand, Australia and South Africa. I don't have England in the top 4. Okay. That is something yeah. that I'm just I'm <laughs> taking a punt. I just want to be Come proved on, right about thing. it. You're not playing fantasy because they're it's okay. because of their spin bowling lineup and all that. I hope we but we'll we, we'll see. We'll obviously build up to the World Cup and this yes. is. What the, the first special episode of the Sledging Room and we'll come back with a lot more. This yeah. has gone on longer than we exactly we planned to because there's so much know. to discuss. There's so much that happened the last couple of days. Yeah. We couldn't but help get those on board as well, but. That's it then. You can obviously catch The Sledging Room on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts and please do leave your comments and rate us as well and you can of course watch us on YouTube. We'd welcome your comments there as well and uh, just a few days back we shot another very special episode with Amrit Mathur, renowned journalist, uh, former BCCI officer and uh, the CEO of the Delhi Daredevils at one point. Um, and obviously india team manager on several historic cricket tours right from 1992 the tour of south africa the 2003 world cup the 2004 tour of pakistan it was a beautiful conversation akshay and i had with amrit reviewing his book pitch side uh, you can obviously catch that podcast on spotify apple podcast and google podcast and also of course on the india today youtube channel and the india today dot in website so please do keep watching and supporting us and there'll be plenty there'll be plenty it wasn't as hostile as the sledging room normally is hopefully it wouldn't be too hostile because when we started of the sledging room we were talking of you know india conquering that icc event winning a world cup we've gone past uh one t20 tournament yes the t20, t20 world, world cup, cup last year did not happen um the asia cup last year did not happen but India finally ended a long wait for a, a big tournament trophy. victory as yeah. well, right? In in 2023, they lifted the Asia Cup. The last time they had done that was in 2018, which was ironically also the Asia, Asia Cup. Cup. So, well, we'll see how we roll around for the next several weeks. Thank you so much for joining us and do catch us again next week on The Sledging Room. You are on India Today Podcasts and you are in The Sledging Room. 